good? All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen, my friends. A few announcements for you, as you can see on the screen behind me, or you can also follow along in your programs as well. First of all, if you're a guest today, we'd love for you to fill out one of our guest cards. That might be in the pews marked as a prayer card, because on the flip side of the prayer card is the guest card and vice versa. Um, since we pray for each other, you can find those prayer requests inside our programs. Unless it's a private prayer request, where then it never enters the bulletin. Instead, it goes to my desk, and it's just for my eyes only. But otherwise, we pray for each other. And if you're a guest, we again would love for you to drop off one of our guest cards in the pew. I'm sorry, in the offering plate at that time in the service. There is youth group tonight, 6.30 p.m. here at the church. Meanwhile, archery tag is still on for May 19th as our makeup event from the rain out date we had in April. So if you're interested, contact us at the church office. Again, that is May 19th. The Blue Jean Chip Banquet, meanwhile, for ladies is Wednesday the 16th of May. Did I say April? Who knows? It's May 16th. This 10 days from now, coming up. Uh, details are inside your programs, so check that out, ladies. Meanwhile, if you have questions, especially questions you've been afraid to ask, or something you want to learn know about faith, or what we do, what we do at church, or whatever, um, we'll be looking at having a sermon series on those questions we were afraid to ask. Um, so just drop off an idea, a note, stick a card under my door if you want, send a carrier pigeon, whatever works for you to get that information in, and we will look at answering every question we can. We've had a couple great ideas come in, but um, if you're interested in something, let us know. Today at 2 o'clock here at the church will be a celebration for Jerry Johnson's 95th birthday. Now, Jerry's on worship here this morning. Hope is he will be here today at 2 o'clock for his party. Um, but since Jerry was in the hospital until Tuesday of last week, was it Wednesday, Joanne? Friday, Thursday. Joanne knows more details than I do. <laughs> yeah, I heard different information than what she did. Either way, Jerry's celebrating his uh, 95th birthday here at the church today at 2 o'clock. So if you're if you're so inclined, come on out. The invite is inside your programs this morning. Um, moment of recognition this morning. Want to uh, want to say thank you so much for. Um, Cassidy Pierce and St. Rogers, who went on our fourth through sixth grader overnighter to Wesley Woods, where they, um, well, we had a blast with our young ladies, which was quite fun. Now, of course, y'all are going to feel very sad for me as I was in the half of the cabin um, where um, there was no heat. Uh, it was very enjoyable since I let my wife have the sleeping bag and I had my sheet. It felt great. It may have been nice here, but when you're up that high, it's 20 degrees less, and let's just say bath towels became my Jerry pillows. Comes. Here he comes. Jerry. Oh, good. I was worried you were pointing to somebody else. Right. <laughs> so, here comes Jerry. What else do we say? I don't know. <laughs> Hold on, let's start that over. All right. Right. 
that lenses and stuff are adjustable and being up that high. Right, right. I mean, we're not like. Well, it heats up during the daytime. At night, it cools down. And things are plastic. It could flip. It could, it could adjust. You know. That's just starting to make more sense. Because everything is here. Oh, send the best. And so, my friends, while we grab our seats, prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Sorry, I missed you. You must have come in. Yes, you said you're interested in helping out. Yeah, yeah. Alright, you can select this to be a little bit. We're always going to start with this. Basically, we're good for now.
else on the screen behind me, but when you leave here, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended to heaven, and sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Friends, please be seated.
it's time for our children's message. If our youngest folks would like to come forward, that'd be a great thing. Morning, Derek. Morning, Evan. Morning, Cameron. All right. Gentlemen and lady, what's the most powerful weapon that you have? Oh, okay. Good point. Besides God, what's the most powerful weapon you have? What do you think, Cameron? Besides God, okay. Besides God, what's the most powerful weapon you have? Good guess. But guess what? I'm using it right now. What do you think, Cameron? The Bible? It is a powerful weapon. But the one that you have on you right now. I don't think you guys have Bibles on you. So it's the most powerful weapon you have on you right now. I'm using it. Right now I'm using it. Not my eyes. What do you think, Cameron? Derek, you got a guess? My mouth. Well, thank you, Derek. Actually, it is. It's maybe the most powerful weapon you have with you wherever you go. Because we can do great things with our mouths, we can do terrible things too. I and mean, we can tell somebody we hate them or call them names. At the same point, we can tell them how great they are. Or you can tell your parents or even your brother or sister that you love them. Yeah. It can be, we can do great things with our mouths and also do terrible things. The Bible reminds us to use our mouths in a pop, you know, in a good way. From Ephesians chapter 4, it puts it this way, from verse 29. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. In other words, don't you see that? The only way to solve for building others up according to their needs. What's that mean? When you speak, it's got to be useful. Uh oh. We're good. We'll just keep on rolling. Whenever you speak, that screen is such a pain. Whenever we speak, yeah, speaking of it, I just mess things up. When we talk, our mouths can be incredibly useful, they can be incredibly terrible. But the Bible reminds us whenever we speak to actually allow our words to be helpful, build people up, not break them down. We use it for two things. It's especially important is to use our mouths to say good things. Especially if it tells somebody you love them. Alright, so let's pray. But help us to use our mouths in ways that help build people up. Thank you so much for how you love us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So when you leave here, be intentional about telling people how you care about them. Avoid the mean words um, that can come out of your mouth as well. And to help you do that a little bit, I'm going to give you new mouths. <laughs> All right, they're lollipops, but close enough. You want a whole new mouth? They're just lollipops, I know. It's in candy since last week, but bear with me. All right, I've got plenty here, guys. If you want to grab two, go right ahead. If you want to grab three, check with your parents. <laughs> Nothing. You're welcome, Good stuff. You're welcome. Friends, we want to give God thanks for this morning. We want to praise God for who God is. And what do we need to be praying for? Bob. Well, we had the bad news of uh, the rest that are going to be closed, and so I'd like to offer up prayers for all the people that are going to be looking for new jobs. Yeah, the resident, yes, the resident will be closing, and so they'll be praying for the folks. And not just the folks will be losing their jobs, too. That, that leaves a big hole um, tax-wise and whatnot in the community as well. It's, it's the reverberations will be felt, let alone the family's business after 100-plus years. Yeah, thank you, Bob. Friends, is there anything else you want to thank God for? Praise God for who God is. Bonnie. Um, just let me know, and thank you for your prayers for my mom. Her surgery went well. And she is at home recovering, and she's cancer-free. Praise be to God. Bonnie's mom is cancer-free recovering and home after surgery. Thanks, Bonnie. Friends, is there anything else you want to thank God for? Praise God. Jerry. Well, what did I say? Probably don't know, but I've been a member of this church for 84 
40 years ago. I wasn't baptized in church, I was baptized out of heart. But the Lord God is always with us. The last couple of weeks have been extremely empty. Not only with me, but my dear friend Tom, who was with me, has been in and out of the hospital physically. And Marsha Harold, who many of you know is a member of Big Ben and Fredonia Church, she's been helping me. And Marsha just had a major heart catheterization Friday, and they couldn't go in her groin, they had to go in her arm, and she's in pain. So remember, remember us all, because God is love. And because God gave his son, and we know that he lives, we will live. Amen, Jerry. Amen. Seriously, Jerry, sermon was 15 minutes or so, and you did it in three seconds. <laughs> Can't tell at all that Jerry used to be the conference lay speaker, which, or lay leader, I should say, and which is an impressive role to hold. Thank you, Jerry. Sue, I saw your hand, too. I'm second. And all we have to ask now is what did Jerry do to you? <laughs> We were shocked that Jim was still alive to make it into church today. <laughs> All kidding aside, it's good to see you too, Jim. Friends, is there anything else you want to thank God for? Praise God for who God is. Anything we need to be praying for? Then, friends, Jerry, I'm sorry, Dale. Uh, my brother is still going through problems since the surgery. Now the wound is starting to seep, so it's just going from one thing to another. Dale's brother Terry months ago had um, brain surgery to deal with the tumors there in his brain, little and all the other issues. The, um, and so that wound, for lack of a better term, from where the surgery was, is still leaking. So I'll be praying for Dale's brother Terry as well. And also be praying for the Wagner family as well in the midst of the uh, funeral service that, and I should say, celebration of life service that we had here at the church yesterday, which Reverend Carlson led, and so many of you were willing to come and help at the dinner. Um, the flowers are in honor of Carol Wagner. Um, but even more so, thank you for how you're willing to serve. Friends, let's go to the Lord together in prayer. Father, we've seen your blessings in our midst. Bonnie's mom, recovering from surgery. What a gift. Jerry Johnson, Able to be uh, be here, let alone out of the hospital. What a gift, let alone Tom also being out of the hospital. What a gift. We thank you, Father, for your hand has moved and worked. We have seen your hand at work in our lives. The healing and Jim, <coughs> what a gift. Let alone Terry, who is still with us on this earth. What a gift. We've seen your hand at work. You're the God who is present. You're the God who is involved in our lives. You're the God who cares for us enough that you sent your son Jesus to pay the price for us that we might live. Open up our eyes to see the incredible love that you have for us that doesn't disappear, that it's always there. That neither height nor depth, nothing above, nothing below, neither angels or demons, nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Nothing. What a gift. You are worthy of praise, Father. We receive junk mail. We hear phone calls. We may have messages on the phone. We, we ignore, especially from those telemarketers. And you are the God who is not disposable and doesn't treat us as disposable. No, he sent your son Jesus to die for us. Talk about love that you have for us. You are worthy of praise for how often we on this earth have not made life easier for others. How in some ways we've fouled things up. You continue to show us your love for your son Jesus. You are worthy of praise that you didn't give up on us. Thank you, Father. We're asking, Father, that you continue to bring about healing upon Terry, upon Jerry, Upon Marsha Harrell, upon Tom, upon Jim, upon Bonnie's mom, we're praying for protection for those who work at the Resner. And for all the families that are going to be affected, love on everyone else, where the ripple effects will continue to occur in our communities. We're praying for that you might move and work. Because 
God is love. We ask for you to move and work as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Friends, the scripture reading this morning comes from John chapter 15, beginning with verse 9 through verse 17. It's John chapter 15. Morning, June. John 15, 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands, and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, let's stand together if you're able. Jesus didn't know when what time it was to care for someone else. 
When we were in Florida with my niece and nephew at Disney last week for vacation, I, well, I should say, and my brother-in-law and sister-in-law were there too, but the seven-year-olds are a blast. So there we are at Disney World at this point, and I don't know who was singing it, but I think my wife Tina was singing this song. It goes sort of like these, cha-cha-cha, don't you know that I love you? I have no clue why she was singing this. I don't know if it was the heat. I don't know if we were out there too long in the sun. Who knows? But she's singing this song, and suddenly Connor, the seven-year-old twin boy, looked at Tina and said, Aunt Tina, you can't sing cha-cha-cha here. We're not at the beach. <laughs> I didn't know there were cha-cha rolls. Did you know that there were cha-cha-cha rolls? Oh, you, some of you knew that there were cha-cha-cha. I didn't fill it in. I didn't have a clue what these cha-cha-cha rules were. But for Connor, there were rules that you don't sing that song now unless you're at the beach. Huh? I don't know if that was because of some YouTube videos or what or not. But there's a time and a place, I guess. Well, God's showing love to others. There is a time and a place where we can and we can skip out. It's at all times. Thanks be to God, or otherwise Jesus would take in a break. As I was getting ready for today, thinking about how we're called to love each other, the song that jumped out at me was this song from the Beatles. And so, Ian, if it means he loved television. For him, that was a propaganda piece in the midst of the flower child revolution. All you need is love. And yet some of the actions within the Beatles, and which the Beatles did to themselves, indicates that they didn't even understand how to love. I guess all of us have issues really, truly practicing love with one another. Maybe that's why Jesus talks so much about loving each other. It's not easy to put into practice. Yet, that's all we need is love. Leonard wrote those words in 1968 as his propaganda piece to remind us to be intentional about caring for each other. And yet, it even misses the mark in some ways because it talks about all we need is love. If we look just at that phrase and parse it and partially may even look at it and realize that we're saying in some regards, all I need is love. Specifically, all I need is for you to love me. Jesus' model of love wasn't, all I need is for you to give me love. His motto was, I love you. I give you everything. All we need is love. See, all we need is love. So we're called to give away freely. Ask Jesus' love freely. In John 15, Jesus knew he was going to be arrested, betrayed, beaten, crucified. And he said these words to his disciples who would be on the run, filled with fear, terror, backbiting at times that can happen more terrified. And he said, greater love is no one than this, and lay down their lives for their friends. And in verse 17, love each other. The reminder being that I'm showing you how to love each other, so do it. But how do we do that? How are we intentional about loving each other when it's easy to throw the words around? What I find in my own life is this. Often when I say, I, don't, I can't do that now, I don't want to do that now, or I'm scared, it's normal when God's calling me to do something. So maybe telling people you really care about them with your mouth. In the house I grew up in, it was understood, not always said, that my parents loved me. Something changed when we started saying, I love you to each other. In other regards, maybe using your mouth means you don't open it at all when someone needs to talk, but you keep your trap shut and listen. There are way too many people on the planet here who would much rather tell you what they know or think or think they know than to listen. That's an incredible way to show someone you love them when you're willing to shut up and listen. It could be with your actions. Cassidy Pierce gave up her senior high Friday night just a couple days ago to go on our fourth or sixth grader overnighter. Sandra Rogers did too. Grandma Sandra Rogers. Out of love. Sometimes it's sacrifice. And whether it is being here for the Wagner's um, celebration of life service and memorial meal that occurred yesterday, or maybe our community meals that happened on the second Saturday of the month, working with our kids with Vacation Bible School on Marvelous Mondays, working around the church here, trying to figure out what in the world to do with the ceiling. All these things are ways to show God's love to others. I don't know what it'll be for each of you. I don't know even what, know what it's going to be for me. But love means, at least God's kind of love, agape love. But ask Jerry Johnson about agape's love. He knows that better than I do. Yeah, I called you out, Jerry. You're welcome. 
where God loved us freely without strings attached. We're called to model that as best as we can, to love freely without strings attached, which means telling someone you love them and not expecting them to tell you, I love you back, which means offering help to someone, maybe even sneaking away so they don't know you did it, to give freely. We live in a world that likes to have strings attached. As the story goes, there's a billionaire oil tycoon from Texas who decided he wanted to marry off, and look how I said that, marry off his homely daughter. She was 18, and he thought it was time for her to move out. That's how the story goes. And so he called in all the eligible bachelors <laughs> in the local area. They all came to his house, looking around, fascinated by the, the opulence of the, the mansion that they lived in, and then were terrified when they looked in the swimming pool. And there, in this Olympic-sized swimming pool, somehow they had sharks and piranhas and alligators. Oh my. I don't know how sharks, piranhas, and alligators, some salt water, some fresh water are in there, but they're all together in there. That's how the story goes. And so all these eligible bachelors looked at the water, terrified, looked at the house, wondering what was going on. That oil tycoon looked at them in Texas and said, gentlemen, I need to marry off my daughter. I'd love for one of you to accept her. All you need to do is show me how much you care. The first young man to jump into the swimming pool and swim across the pool will win my daughter's hand in marriage. Or I'll give you a million dollars. Or I'll give you the title deed to the richest oil field I own. Tycoon's daughter shuffled her feet behind, terrified of what might happen. All the men around the pool looked a little terrified as well. Nobody seemed that excited to jump into the pool. And then splash! So they, the, the tycoon looked over, there's a young man swimming as fast as he could across that Olympic size swimming pool, fast enough that he realized that this young man might be able to swim in the Olympics. It might not have hurt that there was this crocodile about to chop his foot off, but he escaped from the water, rolled out onto the other side of the pool, shivering and shaking as he walked back over to the oil tycoon. And the tycoon looked at the young man who was still stopping by and said, son, do you want the million dollars? No, sir, said the young man. Well, son, do you want the title deed for my oil field? And the smile was getting bigger on that tycoon's face as the young man said, no, sir. Then, son, would you like to marry my daughter? No, sir. Wait, wait, wait. No? You, you're, you were, wow. Then what do you want, young man? The young man looked at the man and he said, I want to know the man, name of the guy who pushed me into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> All we need is love where it's all about love, not about what we get, but what we give. God's love is the kind where we don't need to be pushed, dragged, or pushed into the pool. It's the kind of love that says, here's my son, he died for you, I want the best for you. All we need is love. As we leave here today, here's your assignment, my friends. Because last week's assignment was to choose, to intentionally praise God this last week. So how did that work for you? If you weren't here in worship, we gave everybody musical instruments. We played just like Psalm 150 tells us to make sure we make beautiful music to God. It may not have been so beautiful to my ears, but it sure was beautiful to God's ears when we give it from our hearts. I'm hoping you had that chance to tell somebody who was in worship how you worship God in the middle of the next week. Or last week, I should say. This week, intentionally, show up to someone that's out of the ordinary. It's easy for me to say, Tina, I love you. It's easy for me to get her a medication or go get a Pepsi for her at the house. It's a whole other thing to go out of the ordinary to show someone you love. That's your assignment. Because, friends, all we need is love. That's what we're called to show others as Christians. Not because it's a nice platitude, but because Jesus did that for us. That's where it starts. It's in the, this incredible love of God that we find in Jesus Christ. Some people don't deserve it. You're right. But then, I don't deserve God's love either. So show them love. Because all we need is love. Amen. If you would, would you pray with me? Prayers on the screen behind me. But I encourage you instead to close your eyes, turn your hands up toward heaven, and repeat after me as we pray. Lord God, loving Father. Lord God, loving Father. I love you. I love you. 
Thank you for loving me. Empower me to love my neighbor. Strengthen me to love my enemy. Embolden me to love myself. I love you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, let's continue to worship as we prepare our hearts and minds for the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> Let's sing together hymn number 393, Spirit of the Saint John. Because it's an open table and also all are invited. We also will have in the white pedestal there, there will be juice as well as communion wafers uh, that are gluten free if that is something you choose to partake of. Oh, as friends, we'll celebrate the Lord's Supper um, in the method of intention, which means we will walk forward. A piece of bread will be broken for you, and then you'll dip that piece of bread into the juice. Yes, it is a little messy, and so is love. Yes, it can be a little frustrating at times, but 
We're called to love each other, and that means being a part of life with each other. And so, so we'll celebrate the Lord's Supper together today. Because, my friends, Jesus broke his body for us. Let's celebrate the Lord's Supper together. And so, ladies, gentlemen, we're ready.
And so, my friends, let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given us to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Friends, let's continue to worship through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Where do you find the strength to love folks who are not worthy, or at least in our heads they aren't worthy? 
On Christ's solid rock I stand. That's where we find the strength to love those who we find to be unlovable. And if you spend enough time with people, somebody will find you unlovable as well. You're welcome for the newsflash. All kidding aside, it is the truth. So what else can you do? You can't control what others think of you, but you can control how much you show them God's love. As you leave here today, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and filling you with his love. May God give you peace. Amen and amen. Think. Yes, it wasn't bad. Okay. Are you going to be... Yeah, it, 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 it's the type of thing, you know, as soon as that happens, I'm like, I'm at the button back. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you going to be here the next week or something? Yeah, the 27th, I'm not going to be here. Every other Me week. either. Okay. But what we'll do is, um, like, next Sunday, could you come? Because I was actually looking for you, and you must have come in, like, right out of yeah. the Can you, is it possible to come in a little Oh, yeah. Not yeah. real early. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Um, about 10 30 or so yeah okay what we'll do is also i mean obviously if things that's about one percent of it what you need to do okay it's just there's always little things oh yeah so what happens this is i mean you probably use powerpoint yes yeah. it's kind of like powerpoint but it's a proprietary one called now okay it's designed for churches and there are some advantages for example you can literally just concern with him without having to do anything. Oh, you're welcome. Bad news, Sue. Neither of us will be here on the 27th. So. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> okay. Is that your funding coming? Not, not tomorrow, but the next Monday after that. Okay. Shut it down for Okay. Anyway, I'll show you just okay. a couple little things That'll and then. Explain the soundboard. Okay. Well, basically, his way of soundboard works. And Merle is here, he runs the soundboard. Uh -huh. Period. End of discussion. But every once in a while, if he's not here, now if I'm here and you're running Peter, I'll come up and do the okay. sound. But I'll just show you at least a few little things. So if you have to make yes. adjustments at the last minute, okay. um, That'll work. things like that. Um, but yeah, if you like it, what we'll do yeah. is I'll do the, we'll do similar things the next two Sundays. I'll make sure that I'm sitting in yeah. the region, <laughs> yeah, um, in case things are coming up, and then we can decide if you want to keep going with that. Okay, yeah. I've done it. I mean, I like doing it, but I've done it for like six or seven yeah. years, yeah. and I'm ready. To oh, I, I understand. Back. But again, don't think like oh, I can never have fun to have to do the computer. Yeah. If, you, if you know you're not going to be doing this, let me okay. know. I'll do it. If I can't do That'll it, work. So you can certainly do it. That'll work. And then you know, try and do it the summer. Yeah. So are you going to be a you're a senior? Yeah, school, yeah. Right? I'm, I'm going to call Japan. So oh, so you're, you're, gonna you're, you're home, still going to so. be around. Yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah, you could do it on a, we'll call it semi-permanent. Yeah. And then, you know, because like, I don't want to be like, oh, well, now you're stuck with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and then um, you can kind of work from there. Okay. So, but, yeah, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. You did a great yeah. job. Oh, and like good. I said, you know, it's one of those things. 90% of it, I mean, I'm going to go over things, but a yeah. lot of it sometimes is just, oh, this is <laughs> Yeah. So, and there's not always things that you can